Ayo, Jacksonization here, and I'm going to talk about how much heat can Goku handle. Let's go. Now, I guess you can say this is an add-on to the durability that I did with the earlier videos that I did, um, how powerful Goku is. I added durability in that video, so check that out. But yeah, how much heat can Goku handle? Now, as in heat, I mean, like, if you put Goku in a fucking universal size oven, how many degrees you can handle till he fucking dies? Does he have or don't he have heat resistance? Just questions like that will be answered in this video, so stay tuned. So let's start with some stuff that's been stated and um, downplayed with Goku. So in earlier episodes of Dragon Ball Super, after the Battle of God's Ark and Goku absorbed Super Saiyan God into his base, Bulma wanted Goku to go down to the center of the earth or to the core of the earth to get some material for the time machines he was making. So Bulma was telling Goku to go down to the earth's core and stuff. And Goku was like, huh? From the earth's core and stuff. And he was basically saying, saying that he would probably die if he did go down there. He even said, won't I die if I go here? So this is the scene where every, you know, Dragon Ball down player and his fucking mama tried to downplay Goku and saying he doesn't have heat resistance to even the Earth's core. They pretty much say that Goku's not um, core of the Earth level of heat resistance. But um, you need to understand that no one said that Goku would die because of the heat. But first, let me make this clear. Goku never said he would die if he go down there. He said, wouldn't I die if I go down there? He was asking a question that needed an answer from, you know, Boma, the smartest female on Earth right now. So it wasn't a statement, it was a question. So don't don't take that like it's in your ass. Just, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But back to what I was saying. No one said Goku would die because of the heat. I hope y'all do know that the center of the earth is not a safe place for anybody. Besides the large amount of heat down there in magma and lava, there's barely any oxygen and there's toxic gases in the air. People just forgot about that scientific stuff right there and just went straight to the heat. Like Goku can't handle the heat. So basically what I'm saying is you can't just say Goku would die because of the heat. I mean, there's there's toxic gases, there's, you know, barely any oxygen down there from the breathe. And then there's not only heat down in the center of the earth that could possibly kill Goku. So where am I getting at? You may be asking. Let me show you. By giving you the exact temperature of how hot the core of the earth is. The core of the earth is 6,000 degrees Celsius or about, you know, 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. If y'all don't use a Celsius system, which y'all should, but it's just hot. It's hot as hell. Y'all understand that much. I hope so. So, so we can get, you know, skip to the scene where Goku and them is in the core of the earth and don't be like, well, oh, well, he's not in the core of the earth. He, he's not in lava. Well, yes, I, I don't know why they didn't put them in lava, but let's just say he's in the core of the earth because that's what Boma wanted them to go to. But as you see, he had a um, suit on, you know, which had oxygen and stuff, meaning that, you know, he needed oxygen or they didn't want the toxins to get in him. That's why you see him having a, you know, a astronaut-like suit on, you know, for the breathable and clean oxygen to breathe in but anyway as you see Beerus and Weez they don't even have a suit because they can they poison resistance as shown in the manga when Beerus ate poison and Weez the same while Goku isn't poison resistance but anyway the center of the earth is 6,000 degrees Celsius and Beerus was able to stand there like it was a fucking sauna or some shit like it was a fucking hot day outside and like I said, Goku and Super Saiyan God, which he absorbed in his base form, which the, he is in now, obviously, um, was able to, you know, to swap hands and fucking force him to use a lot of his power. So, I mean, why can't Goku handle the heat if Beerus can? It's just illogical to think that he can't. 
but continuing on, Roshi was able to destroy the moon. Also, in the Saiyan Saga, Piccolo was also able to destroy the moon with little to no difficulty, remind you not. Then Frieza was able to destroy planets in his first form with a flick of his finger. Then even after that, Cell, Super Perfect Cell, was also stated to be able to destroy an entire solar system. And remember, all of these is feats from when they're not even using their full power. With Piccolo not using his strongest attack and Frieza not using his final form, they're not. Then it gets up to universal levels when it's stated numerous times by the narrator, by Vegeta, by Whis, by Toriyama, that they're universals. These are literal universal feats that's being done, you know, up to moon, to planet, to solar system, to universal. These are giant feats that's being done by these Dragon Ball Z characters. She even in Dragon Ball Z, there was universal feats. Using the Buhan and Vegito scale, Buhan was multi-galactic levels, as it would have took seconds to minutes to destroy an entire universe. And Vegito was forced to rush in to stop him, and he's at least eight times stronger than Buhan. Okay, so where am I getting at? I'm gonna make it as clear as possible. With all these feats from moon to universal levels, they have to have kinetic energy to destroy those. And to create kinetic energy, you need a set amount of heat. So you're telling me these balls of magma, plasma, and key doesn't have heat to them? That's what some down players are saying, that these attacks doesn't have heat to it. And because of this, they have no heat resistance, but they have powerful durability and punching strength. That is so illogical to come to conclusion to. So I did this. Some people did some calculations on how powerful the Earth's core actually is. And they calculated from joules per second. All we gotta do is put the temperature of the core of the Earth, which is 6,000 degrees Celsius, and put the height of Goku for surface area, which is 1.9, or the average you know, height of a regular adult human, and remember, in meters, and the emission of the power, like one second you will fill the blast with one core of the Earth. And with all this calculated, you get 166,831,997.198,37. Now we just have to simply convert that power into tons, and you get 0 0.0396. 73804 tons of force. That's barely building level. Yes, building level. When you convert the heat of the core of the earth to power, you get building level tons of force. Goku was building level as a child. Shit, before he even know how to control his key, he was getting shot by bullets which can penetrate buildings and they bounce right off. So I know what you're thinking. How powerful is Goku? Goku, as I've proven in my last video of how powerful Goku really is, go ahead and check that out. He is proven to be able to destroy an attack potency, not in destructive power, but able to destroy 180 universes in his base form. But we will lowball it to just send his base form as multi galactic levels. When you calculate the tons of force and multi galactic levels, you get 7.11 to Nexopho. That is 1.69 times 10 to the 83rd power. That's how many tons of TNT is going off. That is one with 83 zeros afterwards, or 1.699 with 80 zero afterwards. Understand, you're not understanding how big this number is. This is how big the number is. This is the tier that a low balled base Goku have. Vegito and Beerus during his fight with Goku was universal. 
which is millions upon billions times this number. And base Goku has trained for numerous years, have gotten numerous Zenkai boosts. That means he would have been 160 times stronger than his base or Super Saiyan God in the Battle of God's arc. This means that base Goku has to literally swim in the lava of the core of the earth for a lifetime plus just to even have a dent of pain in his body. This means he literally has to swim in the core of the earth's lava for a lifetime plus just to die. And remember, this is just base form Goku. Just base form Goku in the Battle of God's arc after he absorbed Super Saiyan God in his body. Goku still has Super Saiyan Blue Kyle Ken times 20 and Ultra Instinct. Super Saiyan Kyle Ken times 20 is a 9.6 quadrillion times increase. Let me just conclude this because now I'm just rambling on how much power Goku can exert and how much he can take and absorb into his body. So first of all, there is heat in the blast that other characters throw at Goku. This is proven because you need kinetic energy to destroy anything and you need heat. The core of the earth, uh, if you convert it to power, is just building level. Let's say large building level. Goku in the beginning of Dragon Ball Super, in the beginning before all the training and Zenkai boost he got was universal levels. This means that Goku's base just in the beginning of Super was was literally trillions to quadrillions to 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 Nesophone times more powerful than the building level um, core of the earth power that was converted. That is insane. So simply Goku would have not died from the heat of the core of the earth. He would have simply died because of the lack of oxygen and because all of the deadly toxins that's in the core of the earth. If you like what you saw, please smash that like button, subscribe and hit that bell button for more content. Check out my previous videos on how strong is Jiren and my debunks of the debunks. Is Goku's base equal or stronger than Super Saiyan God? If you have any thoughts and questions, comment them down below. I love y'all and Jacksonization out.